Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Youth Ministry Maverick. Uh, this is episode 62, Questions Are Better Than Answers. Now that title might seem dramatic, it might seem flat out wrong, but obviously there's more behind that title than simply looking at it at face value. And that's kind of the heart behind this episode. Now obviously answers and truth primarily, not just answers, is what we rest our faith on. We have the core doctrines of our faith. Uh, Everything rests on Christ, who is capital T truth. But questions are what drive us. Questions help us seek answers, but they also help us to ask better questions. And so for today's episode, I'd like to talk to you about using questions to develop your own leadership ability and the volunteers that you train as well. So if you're familiar with the Morpheus meme, here we go. What if I told you that asking questions and then learning how to ask better questions is what forms a healthy leader. I love how Matt Tebby from Gravity Leadership framed questions through the lens of how Jesus uses them in Scripture. He said, Jesus uses questions differently than we commonly do today. We ask questions for information. Jesus asks questions to provoke transformation. We ask questions for answers. Jesus asks questions for awareness. Jesus asks questions to confront the listener with their own thought process, preconceptions, assumptions, and beliefs. That's powerful. Uh, Some examples in scripture, uh, we look at John 1, and we see some of John the Baptist's disciples seeing Jesus walk by. John says, you know, behold, the Lamb of God, and the disciples that were with him just follow Jesus. And Jesus turned to them and said, what are you seeking? Right? He could have said anything and he could have just been asking a simple question. Uh, But out of the 13 most commonly used English Bible translations, only two translations translate that as what do you want? The rest of them use the word seek, seeking, or looking for. So Jesus isn't one to waste an opportunity to use words. And he asked them, basically, what are you expecting to find when you follow me, right? This guy named John, who you've been following, is telling you that I'm the Lamb of God, but what are you hoping to get from following this son of a carpenter who you really don't know anything about, except there's this kind of aura around him that's mysterious, but yet intriguing. So if we're to model for the next generation that sense of hunger, that sense of anticipation, that sense of, hey, you're giving me an answer. Hey, you're making the right move or you're making a move, but do you know why you're making it? Do you know what's behind it? Do you know what your faith is about or what you want for your faith? There's some other uh, examples, John 4 with the woman at the well is a pretty big one, right? When he's talking about getting a drink, he's not talking about quenching biological thirst with actual water. He's talking about the fountain of life, right? He's talking about himself and how this woman needs what he is offering for salvation, for eternal uh, quenching of the thirst. And so, uh, When we think about what it means for us to ask questions, right? As leaders, when we ask questions, we're trying to gauge, um, trying to measure, trying to figure out progress or the lack thereof. Um, And so we need to handle questions as carefully and really hold them in as good esteem as we do solid answers. Because if we don't learn to ask better questions, then we're not going to be humbled. We're not going to continue 
having to be dependent on the Lord and what the Spirit provides for us and how we interact with others. Um, If we just give a base answer and we're afraid to say, I don't know, um, that's not going to work for the students that we're teaching and for us as leaders when we engage with students, especially the friends they might bring who don't know Christ. We need to be able to show them why questions are powerful. Uh, Jesus asks over 300 questions in the Gospels. Uh, So we need to be aware of how to interact and how to continue dialogue and conversation and development and learning and becoming more like Christ. And a lot of that practically has to do with asking better questions. So that perspective is what I want to briefly go over and how can we do that, right? So uh, one way to do that is uh, with your volunteer leaders, um, ask them questions that maybe they're not used to having to answer. I think our volunteer leaders especially are used to us casting vision and they want to fit into that vision. And what's important to us becomes important to them. That's great. But do they know why they're even involved with students to begin with. I want to make an impact. I want to model for them. That's great. But are they using what God has given them? Are they considering what they think is important and what they think is needed in the life of a teenager? Or are they letting all that take a back seat to just what we say is right? Let our leaders pour into and speak into the vision of our ministry, not just sit and wait for us to tell them what it is. Um, We did an Enneagram series uh, back in February, and it was great to talk to all of those different youth leaders and workers who uh, God wired differently uh, and to hear their perspective and to be in their shoes and to say, oh, when this happens, you know, I know I would react in this way. Um, And hearing them talk about how they think or react to something is like, why would you do that? But that's how God wired them. And when we have various leaders, um, in fact, the more volunteer leaders or adults or anyone that we have helping us, the greater the diversity and the greater your need is to make sure that those leaders are speaking into the vision and feel valued, see their worth, see their value, and have the space and the freedom to use what methods they think work well based on their personality, based on how God wired them to reach those students. And it might not look like what you think is the best strategy or method. And sometimes it's not, but that's why we're there to coach them. Uh, But we need to be able to have a wider array and have a wider plane and allow for failure and allow for things to not go well in order to learn ourselves, have our leaders learn, and have our students see that leaders mess up. I'm not just here to give you what something written and then pass it along. This is what I actually believe, right? We've read and heard it said on other podcasts and panels and conferences how this generation values authenticity so much. They don't want someone up front who's saying, I'm the leader, I'm the teacher, so don't question me, just hear what I'm saying. No, they want people who are humble. They want people who could admit, you know, this is hard for me. You know what? That's a great question. I don't know. And I still wrestle with it. In fact, what I believe might be something that you might find to be totally wrong, but here's why I believe it. And they want people to be able to engage with them authentically and be real and show that they are fallible, show that they don't have things figured out sometimes. And I think it helps them relate to us when we meet them there and we don't try to put on this mask and persona of, I know everything, just listen to what I'm saying. Um, And I feel like as leaders, even for me, uh, well, as if I'm greater, I'm just saying uh, something that I think about and wrestle with all the time, even if I know that's the best approach, is what I think many of us fall into. And that's 
when we read scripture, we're like, scripture is all sufficient. If you hear scripture, if you know these core truths, then they should speak for themselves. And I agree. But if the students that we're talking to, leading, if the friends of the students that come and, and our students talk with them, we can be saying the right things. But if the way we're saying them is in a way that makes the other person feel like we don't really care about them. We're just trying to get across what the right answers are or what the information is, or, hey, stop talking. Hey, stop messing around. Just listen to this. They want to know that they're cared for and heard and seen for who they are, not just empty tanks for us to be satisfied filling with what we want to share and then move along. That's not how modern youth ministry works. And it's going to drive students away. It's going to drive leaders away if that's the way we approach things. Um, so with that Enneagram series, as I just mentioned, uh, we talked about how God wired us differently. And so we have different gifts to use and we need to approach things in a way where we ask certain questions in a way that it might seem obvious to you what the answer is, but to that leader or to that student, they need to hear and process things in a certain way. Uh, Dr. Andy Root, when we talked with him, brought up a great point. Uh, he's our Enneagram 5 expert. And uh, those of us who uh, are really introverted or who process a lot of things internally, uh, it might seem, as he put it, it might seem that uh, that leader is uninterested and disengaged and isn't really part of what's going on, but really what's happening is they're observing, they're watching, and they're trying to see where they can fit in and plug in and contribute to what's happening. And if we see leaders hanging out on the outskirts, kind of watching, but not, not really doing anything, we might think, ah, oh, they're, they're slacking off. They don't want to hop in there. Or, oh, they're just scared and they don't know what to do with these teenagers. And I see this happen every week and maybe this isn't a right fit for them. But when we ask them why they're doing what they're doing, I think many times we'll be surprised to see that actually there's a lot that they're doing and picking up on. And we have a lot of students who are wired that way as well. Um, whenever we play dodgeball, whenever we play these big active games, there's always a pocket of students who is like, I'm good. And they're sitting on the stage or they're sitting on the side, on their phones, talking with friends or whatever. And we need leaders to be there with them to uh, resonate with them on their level and to learn to ask questions and to dream and to, you know, think about some big questions of, you know, I'm not here to play dodgeball. What I'm actually here for is um, my friend who brought me keeps talking about Jesus and I want to see why, why you guys are different. And uh, that's a big reason why asking questions, I think, has to be a huge part of how we do leadership development, how we grow as leaders. Um, there's uh, something that I probably mentioned uh, on previous podcast episodes, uh, but uh, things that I've read recently about how apologetics with this generation, the perspective has to change because for these younger generations, um, the big questions to answer for them aren't, you know, where's the scientific proof that God exists or those kind of things. What they're asking are more identity-driven questions. They're asking, why does this matter to me? Okay, cool. God exists. Is he good? If he's good, then why is this happening? And that's kind of a more common, more old school problem of evil question. But they're really wanting to know, kind of like that theoretical friend scenario I mentioned, you know, how are you guys any different than me, right? I see Christians at school and I hear the jokes they tell and I hear the language that, that, that they use and I hear what they're interested in. And to me, it doesn't seem like they're any uh, different or better than anyone else I know. So what's going on? So we need to be aware of what's happening with students that come into our uh, our building and our ministry, whether they're long-time attenders or their first time guests. We can't just assume what uh, these kids know or don't know or what they're looking for. We need to ask them. Um, so 
other ways that we can use that um, inquisitive approach with our leaders. Uh, I mentioned earlier having your leaders speak into the vision, but really I think we need to help leaders see and understand how God's wired them well um, and to see, hey, as a leader, how, how do you want to grow? What are you expecting to get out of this? And questions you could ask your leaders, whether it's in just a normal meeting, whether it's in like a leadership training or workshop, um, you could ask them, what's something that if you had as a leader, you think you would do much better as a leader if you had this one thing, right? And if you don't have that one thing, how are you going to lead in spite of it, right? Do you feel like you're inadequate? Do you feel like you need something? What if you can't get what you think you need to be a good leader? Do you still think you can lead well? Why or why not? How can I help you, right? How can I coach you? How can I listen? How can I walk with you in growing in that? Where do you want to be with your group at the end of the semester, at the end of the school year? How are you going to get there? What's your plan? What are the major hurdles that you think are going to stop you from getting there? What excites you? What motivates you? What are you afraid of? right? Really give the leaders some introspective space to be able just to think, concentrate, focus, pray, journal about, and really learn about who they are as much as they are wearing the leader badge in your ministry. Um, Because what we see and know as leaders and what we show students when they come back to teach junior high kids or heck when they're teaching uh, younger kids in VBS or at a sports camp or something is something that they know really well. They've heard this Bible story 50 times and so they're going to share it and do a skit and everything. But when you're teaching other people who don't know anything about something that you know really well and it's become natural for you, As the teacher, you have to put yourself in their shoes and think, what was it like when I didn't know how to dribble a basketball between my legs? What was it like when I didn't know this story or this concept? And you have to start from the beginning and go through it with them. And when you're doing that, you are learning as much as the person that you're teaching because you're learning how to relate. You're learning how to go back and maybe refine some of the things that uh, you just know roughly. And we do that through asking questions. And so you see where I'm going with this, this theme of asking better questions. Now, I think when we really empower our leaders to ask questions of themselves and really get to know why they're wired in a certain way and what that means for their ministry, it allows us to stop pigeonholing our leaders without weighing their proper scope of potential that's probably not um, evident to them and maybe even not evident to us until we walk with them, ask good questions, and think about how God is using us and growing us, transforming us more and more into the likeness of Christ. And so um, the thing I want to wrap up with is something that I think you can use with your students, and I'll share how I did that in a minute, but I think you can also use it with your leaders. And what it revolves around is something that we have talked about on this podcast several times. Probably the most direct example is the book Narrative Apologetics by Alistair McGrath I went through with my brother Ryan. Uh, And it's using the power of story to connect with one another, but also to see where God's at work and how you're wired and how you see things and what God is doing in the midst of that. And uh, there was a formula I used uh, to have students lead out on Sunday nights last school year. Uh, And it revolved around them sharing a story that happened recently, preferably, or just some big story in their life that shaped them. And they would share their story through the same formula. And so it would be easy for them to fill out that formula and share their story. And also students every week would kind of know what that person's going to share and the way they're going to share it. And the the formula was really simple. Uh, What was the event or circumstance? So what happened? Um, How did I feel while it was happening? 
Um, how did I see God at work in the midst of it happening? And how has that event and God working, how has that made an impact on my life now, on my life story? And then the person who told that story, the student, along with an adult leader in the group, would then facilitate questions to the rest of the group based on that story and that person who told it and maybe the stories of others. Um, They would ask, have any of you had something similar happen to you? Uh, If you were in my shoes and that happened, how would you have responded? Uh, Knowing who I am, your friend in the youth ministry, do you think God could be showing me something through that story that I'm overlooking, that I've missed? And in hearing the story I shared, do you think God could be revealing something about himself or yourself in that story that you are now realizing and, oh, that's right, I've been there before, or I've seen that, or I've wrestled with that. What could he be showing you? And it was great. The interaction and the questions from students in response were really good, and it gave students a good platform to be able to share some things and see how their stories can all connect with one another. And it happened through, say it with me, asking better questions. Okay? So I hope that um, this short um, series of examples of learning how to ask better questions uh, will help you in your ministry development as a leader yourself, as a leader you're training, as the students that you're teaching to lean more into their faith, lean more in their dependence on the Lord, and grow and grow by asking better questions. Well, that's all for today. Uh, Thank you for sticking around to watch me ramble. Hopefully you got something interesting. Uh, All the links to our social media and website pages uh, are down below in the video description. Uh, You'll be able to subscribe to our channel right here and watch our last video right here. Uh, Also, if you could, please give this video a like and share it with anyone you think would benefit That's all for now. Hope to see you back here on Friday for the next Fantastic Friday Five. Until then, adios.